You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Ninghao, washi Pei Pei Champion. I'm the creator of Champion Chinese Language Program and the founder, director, and principal teacher of Champion Chinese Language Institute. Today, I'm very happy uh, to have a special guest, uh, Ms. Donna Gordon. She's my former student, and she's also a Reiki master and a, a retired um, Jewish uh, cantor uh, at the Jewish temple. And today, I would like her to talk about her experience in my uh, previous 10-hour class at West Hartford Continuing Education. And uh, also, uh, if we got a chance, we want to also have some uh, knowledge about ancient Hebrew, what it is to do with, uh, uh, I think, ancient Hebrew Classic Hebrew and classic traditional Chinese scripts are probably the only um, used uh, language, ancient languages uh, that is still surviving and can connect us to our ancient um, civilization. So uh, let's welcome Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Pepe. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So you have studied. 10 hours uh, the Chinese language with me. Mm -hmm. So tell me why, what made you decided to learn the language? Well, since my retirement and a little bit before my retirement, I was involved with learning uh, Qigong and Tai Chi uh, with Dr. Ming Wu here in West Hartford Center. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as his intern, I'm uh, and learning about the different acupressure points uh, that uh, that he uses in his practice of Chinese acupuncture, which I now am certified to do myself. Um, and so there's a lot that is in traditional Chinese medicine that requires a basic knowledge of Chinese and being able to uh, pronounce the characters. I know that uh, the mainland uses the simplified characters, but uh, also a lot of the traditional Chinese medicine is based on uh, learnings of the Tao Te Ching, which mm. is the classical uh, Taoist uh, sacred scriptures, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so um, as a cantor, a Jewish cantor in a synagogue, in order to read our sacred scriptures, uh, Hebrew scriptures, it's the Torah especially, we have to have a working knowledge of biblical Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And so you really can learn a uh, learn some of these ancient texts better mm -hmm. if you learn it in the actual language it was written rather than through a translation. Because yes. transla every translation is is an interpretation mm -hmm. of the person who has translated the text. Yes. So, uh, so I always find it when I teach Hebrew to my students, I always teach them how to read Hebrew so that they can then go and read the prayer book or the, uh, the scriptures themselves. Yeah, so they, they can actually have a direct contact and understanding through their own comprehension. Right, and, and, al and also the translation of uh, when you read it in its own language, you find that, you find that the, uh, you get an idea of how, at the time when it was written, you get an idea of how the people thought. What was their mindset? Yeah. How did they live their everyday lives? How did they, how did they interpret the world around them. And sometimes you can see that through the characters that they use as their letters. 
Because mm -hmm. as, as, as I know, uh, Chinese is a very uh, pic pictorial mm -hmm. language, and so is ancient uh, Hebrew as well. We now use the Phoen uh, Phoenician uh, text uh, letters, but um, early, early Hebrew letters were all iconographic. They were pictures like uh, an olive looked like an ox. Oh, so can you just see a character and then you, you know it's something to do, well, something related to ox? Well, yeah, but it would be it would be something some quality that they found in, in ox. an ox, you know, that okay. they would that would trans. Okay, so you can still that. know that that particular word is related. Well, to, to yeah, ox. and certain and and, and the, the thing about Hebrew is that it is a language that is that is a that is mostly consonantal, consonantal. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's really no so vowels. So no vowels. Uh, there's like maybe uh, two of Av and a, and a Yud, and what what it is made of is it's kind of really in, ingenious. It's made of three and four letter uh, root roots mm -hmm. to a word, and then certain letters will be added before and afterwards okay. to indicate other like whether it's a noun, whether or not they're adding a pronoun to the end of it, that kind of thing. It, it's really a language of um, uh, a language where everything is put together on the same word. You can have the word, you can you could have and and the and a pronoun at the end. So you can say and he and he stood uh, and he stood there it, all in one word. So oh. it's just, they just add, add like, like German add in prefix, kind of. add in prefixes and suffixes. Yeah. Okay. So, but those three letters, those three, those three and four letter roots mean a lot. Mm. And you can get different meanings from different ways you manipulate the letters. Okay. It it's, sounds very creative. It is. It is very creative. And it's really not that difficult to learn. Okay. But talk about not difficult to learn. It doesn't I, I have, have as question. many letters as, as, as Chinese. We, we are not letter language. Okay. We, we are not alphabetic language, but we do have uh, the Bobama, right? 37 sounding symbols, which are derived from the classical Chinese characters. So in a way, most of the people, long, long time, 100 years, they use it to only for to help people sound out the Chinese characters. But they are not characters. They are part of the characters. And somehow when I realize my language is dying and people think it's difficult to learn and they want to simplify it, even Romanize it, and I think, well, they, there must be a way to save it. They, they, let me think. So I am the person find out if it's derived from that, from classical language, character, what if we put them back and use it as a tool to help us to understand and write the real character? So put all the parts together, mm -hmm. use the, the Bopoma symbol as part, not letter, okay, use as a part to put them together and construct the character. And is there, does that make sense? Do they still make sense inside the character, every single part of the bubble mo? And I found yes. Mm -hmm. Somehow, this is what I developed, the champion Chinese. This is so funny. Have you noticed? Actually, this is, um, this is my old name. Uh, champion bubble mo and Han Yu Pinyin. This is the first edition. And then when I publish this in Taiwan, um, the, the, the assistant director of um, Overseas Chinese Commission Department, um, Mr. Zhen Dongxin say, um, he is such a supporter. And I have to say to the world, this gentleman, Mr. Zhen Dongxin and Zhang, uh, the chair of OCAC, Zhang Fumei, are the two people, and including me though, three. We are the three people that our effort to help this Bopoma system sustain. And because of them, the traditional script 
is not completely dead after all these years. So I really want to uh, dedicate my gratefulness to them, uh, these two gen uh, uh, lady and gentlemen. But he told me that because I have Han Yu Pinyin in Taiwan, it's just politically not right. <laughs> so he said, how about let's change the name, OK? I say, well, that's fine, because then he gave me the new name, Champion Chinese Foundation Level uh, Sounding System and Pronunciation. So we have two pronunciation system, and we have two tools to help people to read. Only the Bopama, the Zhuying symbol, can actually also help you to have the idea about how the uh, the whole character is constructed, the parts, and the writing order. Mm -hmm. Have you ever uh, thought about, uh, I think you or Nina asked me, so wh which stroke I have to write first? And wh what is the second stroke, right? And, and, but I, and then I say, oh, um, right now at the beginning, I really don't care, right? right. But then later on, I say, once we learn all the Bopoma, it will come to you, but I do give you, I did give you four regular rule. What is that? Chinese character always write from top down and from left yes. to right. Mm -hmm. And the then middle. if you have uh, like a box, Chinese love box, even if it's a circle, we make it a box. So if you have a box, you put the ma, so you will have, uh, you create this like a roof like a box, and then you, whatever inside you fill in and close the door. Exactly. Right, remember? Yeah. So that, that has the rule. But these 37 symbols um, kind of help us to, to decode um, the, every single character, but not like Hebrew. You say your word, you can have the four root, and you have a uh, prefix and everything, and you can put it all together, create a word, right? Right. It, wow. A, a thought, a concept. Right? A concept, a thought. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get into that a little deeper because it's, it sounds very, very interesting. And, but Chinese has, uh, each word has one sound. But somehow, we, we have 55,000 characters. We have 400 sound only. That's probably one of the reasons people think it's, dif it, it's difficult. But I, right now I want to know, so you, you talk about, we, we basically have to learn at least 3,500 to five or 6,000 characters so that in ev you, you are able to, uh, in the society, you know, you can, you can do well. Mm -hmm. And how many words in Hebrew that you have to know? So that how many letters we have? The alphabet, our our alphabet that we have now, is based on the Hebrew Aleph Bet, mm -hmm. because our our Hebrew letters begin Aleph Bet Vet Gimel Dalit Hey Vav Zayin Chet Tet Yud Chaf Kaf Lamed Mem Nun Samach Ayin Pei Fei. Sari Kufresh, Shin Sin Tov. Those are those are letters. Those are all the letters. It's about it's about uh, about twenty twenty six. Okay. Twenty seven. So how long and when your student go to school? They have to spend on um, learn and memorize how to write those character uh, letters. Um, like take how, how many well, hours in, in? in 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 an Orthodox family, the child will learn uh, will start learning it, the letters on at the age of three. Mm -hmm. uh, but in America, uh, if your if your child is not going to a day school, okay, like a Hebrew day school mm -hmm. where they they go like a regular um, public school, mm -hmm. but only they go to a religious school all day rather than a public school. Um, they will, uh, they will have it throughout the day, so that would be five, five days a week. Five days a week. But most, uh, uh, most American Jews, uh, you know, send their kids to the who, who are not as traditional, mm 
language school. They send their kids to they send their kids to their synagogue school uh -huh. uh, for the children, and so um, when I was teaching in a conservative uh, temple uh, years ago, um, we had. I was teaching two afternoons a week for about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and then uh, another teacher would teach them on Sunday for about another hour and a half. So okay. they, they got quite a bit of... So three uh, hours a week. Right. But in some... Twelve uh, hours in, a in, month. In, in other temples, uh, reform temples, which is, which is what my uh, clergy uh, affiliation is with. Um, we would teach the, the kids from kindergarten to five years, uh, to fifth grade, um, on, only on Sundays for about okay. an hour and a half to okay. two hours. Well, there are other, many, many other subjects that we teach the children, too. Um, and then uh, from grades five through seven, it would be two days a week. They would, they would get instruction for about three hours a week. Okay. So, so uh, earlier we talked about, so about... One year, you will spend um, every month 12 hours. So one year will be 224 hours. And then, but you don't spend all the time memorize and drill on that 26 letters, right? Well, you, you teach them, you teach them in... How to use it. Well, you, you teach them... Uh, you you teach you teach them the letters and you t and as you're teaching them you you teach them how to put them together with uh, with the vowels mm -hmm. to so be they able can to compose speak, words so that they can compose words and so that the, they can the, conduct the, conversations. The real reason the real reason is uh, is that we want them to be able to to uh, say what say the prayers. Okay. Okay. We want them to be able to but, read but the prayer book. But how many hours they have to spend and write in order to memorize that 26 letters, roughly? Um, there are some classes that will, that will take, uh, like I've, I've taught the vowels and, and consonants to adults, adult learners, um, in an eight-week class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they'll take two or three letters a week. Okay. And they'll work on that, and, and we'll add in a couple of vowels for them to learn, too, and then they'll start putting those together to, to start creating sounds and words. Okay. So do you remember how, how many hours we spent on helping you to acquire that 37, about two, well, the first was, two lessons, right? Yeah, it was, uh, it was about two and a half hours an evening uh, for, for a week. Yeah, for a week, but for that, like five days. Five. But for five days, uh, we already learn a lot of characters and uh, conversation, singing. But to to introduce and memorize those thirty-seven letter basically is um, two to five hours. I think we take shorter than five hours. Okay, so tell 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 us about your experience in that that course. Oh, uh, you know, I think the thing that I will always remember about uh, uh, the class was, uh, see, as a cantor, we are the musical clergy, so we are we are entrusted with the um, with the chanting of the prayers. We are mm -hmm. the shlichei tzibur, uh, which is the messengers of the of the community. Mm -hmm. So our voices help to bring the community's prayers to uh, to God, mm -hmm. and so um, so what always is a for me something very very a good way to learn anything is through music. That's that's what my background is. So I guess musician. I didn't disappoint you. <laughs> so no, you did not. And so you know, so uh, recently, uh, Doctor Wu. Uh, at the Wu Healing Center, had a friend from China visit for several weeks, and uh, and she was trying to communicate with me. So I was able to uh, communicate a few words and thoughts to her in Chinese through remembering what you had taught me through the song. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I was talking about a number with her, I would start singing the song. <laughs> 
<laughs> for the numbers in my head, mm -hmm. or if I was uh, saying hello or goodbye or good evening, good afternoon, uh, et cetera, I would remember that song. Yeah. So it's always in my years of, of teaching at the synagogue, uh, et cetera, music is always a wonderful tool to get people to uh, to learn. In fact, that's, that's really how I teach um, our alphabet or mm -hmm. alphabet mm -hmm. to the students is through uh, a song by uh, one of our Jewish composers, Debbie Friedman, and the kids. It's a it's an echo song that the kids really yeah. Enjoy. So they, you repeat, repeat it, and, and again, they love it. and yeah. you you come you you combine with your body movement, right? Yeah. We, we do a lot of body movement. We do we do tong fu, right? Right. And then uh, so we can I introduce uh, the the sound. Remember the first tone e and e e e right so um and then we we actually use that to to do some uh body movement and uh actually i um i i try to tap uh the learning into using all our senses in our class well because we're all multi uh, we we all learn differently Everybody yeah. learns differently. Some people, you have to read a book. Some people are they have, uh, to, they move. have to send. They have to move, as we know. And with, sometimes with, people with have our, to write. We know with our own children. You know, they the, uh, uh, they learn differently. Um, so I always found that um, in 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 teaching uh, Jewish concepts to my students that that through music and through getting them up. And moving and other ways, and talk, visual, but talk et about cetera. Those, it was those pictures. Does that pictures help you? To the pictures are great because then they tell a story, and mm -hmm. they help you to remember uh, what the different, uh, how to remember, how to how to differentiate them somehow from another la another I letter give you that a might yeah that might be uh, similar looking yeah because this one has a hat. Mm -hmm. And this one has a long leg, yeah. or whatever you know. But, this but one's the pretty. story actually guides you to the sound, right? Yes. The, the actually the story and the picture actually guide you to the different to differentiate the characters' difference and also the sound. Correct. What is it different about the sound? And and actually that's my purpose. And I I I really don't know why and how I create this. Because um, when I when I create this, I think it takes me about completely whole week. I didn't really eat. I didn't really sleep. I I just concentrated on doing that. And I remember my nanny always make me coffee, and then and he will she will find molded coffee everywhere <laughs> because I didn't even you know I cannot think about anything else. I focus myself completely doing this. But what is the, um, did I, did, did the learning experience exceed your expectation? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of follow-up uh -huh. on my part, you know, uh, f getting the time to uh, continue with, with that and to, uh, to work that into my schedule. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I I I make it into one week. Yeah, it, it was a lot of a lot, information to take in at once. I agree, especially you have daytime jobs and everything. Usually, I would do it, you know, twice a week or once a week, you know. But this time is because I'm ready to move, right? I I want to wrap up to move. So, um, be, I thought. You know, I think before I leave, I want to do the last time. You know, I, I want to, I just feel like I have to give <laughs> as much as I can before I leave. I, I, you know, I cannot leave my friend without knowing all this, especially you and, and, and some of other friends, because you are very much into this culture. And yes. if you are not introduced to the traditional script, especially you are interested in the Chinese medicine, this is especially important. You you know, the traditional script, because when uh, China in 1956 they simplified it, um, 
it's like I always make a joke. You know, if you uh, bear, deer, um, pear,、um, mirror, they all sound similar. But if you all replace with bear, I guess kids will be very happy. So if they misspell, they will not be marked wrong. Okay, and people that are very lazy doesn't want to spend time. They whatever they is something like bear, beer, they deer, they just say bear. Okay, so that will be easy for them, but it's very confusing in a way. And then for a doctor, you cannot mess up with the words. It's important. You if you you want to treat stomach, you cannot you cannot put the medicine that treat athletic feet. To your patient, right? You cannot give it to that. You you need to know exactly what it is,、mm -hmm. okay? Instead of yeah, kind of. No, you cannot do that. So this is why I I want to do that. But um, um, so tell us, do 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 we do I give you your do I build your foundation to that? And do you still have interest to go even deeper? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely,、uh, it's it, it's important if you're if you're studying Chinese medicine to、uh, mm -hmm. to be able to、uh, to at least be able to pronounce the words. I, that's what I thought that the Bupamo、uh, Bupamo、uh, letters were really good for. So、uh, plus, you know, when, when you study、uh, traditional Chinese medicine. You study herbology as well,、mm -hmm. so and they all come with their own sound, sounds, etc. But you have the tool. I have the tool now to 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 pronounce it right. Exactly because、yeah. because、uh, when you、uh, a lot of Americans will 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 go by the Pinyin、mm -hmm. uh, letters, and as as you and I were discussing a while ago. The C, like uh, uh, C A O, people would would pronounce it as cow, <laughs> but it's actually a cow. Cow. That we, would be grass. And we we have that letter, which is which is nice. I found a similarity with it in Hebrew because there is a tzadi, a tz, yeah, a tz, yeah, a, a, the same sound. So that was easy for me to, to、yeah. kind of like move over to that. I、uh, I I think so, that we we will wrap it up and we will discuss it、um, more later in another in another section. But I I already learned a lot. And next next section we are going to discuss why、uh, classic、uh, Hebrew and classic Chinese、uh, can help us to have the connection to our ancient、uh, history and ancient civilization and wisdom. And why they are important. And I will see you soon. 再见。